Being an Uber driver is a great way to earn extra money. With driving strangers to their destinations, you can meet some interesting people, but sometimes you can meet some scary people. Sometimes scary stories don't involve the paranormal. Sometimes normal can be scarier. In previous videos, I have told quick, personal stories, driving people through scary places and some bizarre experiences. The first story isn't paranormal, but far more scary than any ride I have ever been on. It was 10 p.m. on a Sunday night, and I decided to do one more trip than I was done. I made myself available and shortly a call came in, and the app indicated that it was a long trip, 45 minutes or greater, so I accepted it and made my way to pick up the rider. The rider was located in a well-known sketchy community near where I live. But I've done it before and had perfectly normal trips. Boy, was that about to change. I got to the house, which was at the end of the street. The road ended and beyond went into the woods, and it was pitch black. I informed the rider through text I was there. He messaged me he would be right out. I waited until I noticed that a person walked out from behind the house, almost appearing out of the shadows. He walked up and I asked what his name was, and he verified that I had the right person named Marcus. He got in and I looked at him with a smile. He was a white male, mid-twenties, wearing a black long sleeve shirt. He had a long gold chain on and had short, messy hair. I said, how are you? And he replied, I'm all right, and then he turned to the window. I started the trip, and I saw where I was taking him, and it was a 47-minute ride to an extremely bad neighborhood. It was all right, though. The money would be good, and a good way to end the night. As I was about to ask him if he wanted to listen to music, I heard a cell phone ringing. He picked it up, and this was the conversation verbatim. You would not forget overhearing this. Marcus started. Nah, man, I told him before. I got there and he didn't have the money. The other voice said, so what did you do? Marcus replied, it's taken care of. The other voice said, what does that mean? After this point, he started to talk lower. I'm not sure if it was for me to hear, but I still heard. Marcus then said, I choked the shit out of him. Other voice said, is he? And then Marcus interrupted, yeah, he is. Now at this point I thought I was in a weird dream or maybe he was just messing around and he still may have been, but we were three minutes into the trip and there was still over 40 minutes to go. Then I look in the rearview mirror and I notice he is looking at me. He said after he got off the phone, sorry about that. I said, no worries, with a waver in my voice. In my mind, he knows I heard. Then his cell phone dings and he looks at his phone and he proceeds to text for the rest of the trip. The minutes keep counting down to the destination. Finally, one more turn and this will all be over. I turn onto a dimly lit street in the bad neighborhood I was talking about. I pulled up to his house and stopped the car. I looked in the rearview mirror and he was just staring at me and a chill ran up my spine. I turned to him and said, thank you Marcus, have a good night. He didn't say anything, he just nodded at me, opened the passenger side rear door and got out but he left his door open. Instead of getting out, I climbed to the back and closed the door. As I sat back down on my seat, I instinctively locked the doors. Then I noticed a shadow covering my window. I look out and see two men wearing dark clothes and hoodies staring at me. I couldn't see any faces. Then I noticed one of the men tried to open the door, but he couldn't. He then took something silver from his jacket and before I could process it, I sped down the road and got out of there. When I was far enough away, I pulled into a well-lit parking lot and let it sink in. He left the door open on purpose to give his friends time to get to the car. I also think he had a knife. At this point, I don't know what to do next. Do I contact Uber or just call the police? Then I hear a ding. I turn and look into the back seat and see Marcus's cell phone. I pick it up and try to open it, but it is locked. Then a message comes in and I can see it on the home screen. There were three that I could read and this is what they said. The first one said, okay, we'll take care of him. The second one said, get him in the basement. And the last one that came in was obviously when they realized I had his phone. I know you have his phone, you're lucky. 
I turned the phone into the police and told them what happened. They took a report and told me they would be in touch. I contacted Uber as well, and they got back to me and told me Marcus's account has been terminated. The police called back and tracked Marcus down, and he was taken in for questioning. A few days later, there was a news report that a dead body was found in the complex where I picked up Marcus. The body was found strangled to death. In my life, I never intended on taking a 3 a.m. challenge. I never thought that Uber could be effective by the whole witching hour. On this night, Uber decided to partner with the paranormal, leaving me terrified and questioning what's real and what isn't. I needed some extra money, so I decided to pull a long night of rides. Rides were steady at first, but the later it got, the more scarce the rides became, as it was the reaching the middle of the night. At 3 a.m., I received a ride request for a trip so I quickly accepted after not having a call for about 30 minutes. The rider's name was Anne, and I was eight minutes away from her. It was a short trip. As I start my ride over to her, I pulled up to a red light. I then get a text message from the rider. It said, hello? I texted back, hello Anne, I will be there in a few minutes. Immediately I got a message back saying, it's late, I need to get home. I texted back, I'm on my way, sit tight. Then the light turned green and I made my way a little quicker to her because I felt bad. The GPS told me to turn off of a paved road onto a broken, graveled road, surrounded by trees. All I could think of was this poor girl. How did she get stranded out here this late? The GPS and Uber said my passenger was on the left. There was a break in the trees and I pulled into what looked like a graveled parking lot overlooking a lake. I parked the car and looked around and saw no one. I looked at the screen and the pin for the person was actually in the middle of the lake. I instantly got chills as my phone rang. I picked it up and with a shake in my voice, I said, hello, Anne, and heard nothing but static crackling through the phone and then it disconnected. The entire experience was so scary to me that my mind kept screaming to me to end the ride and leave, but I just froze. It wasn't until I actually saw the pin start moving closer to me that I finally got my bearings and ended the ride. I put my car in reverse and when I looked at the backup camera, I thought I saw a white mist pass by my car, so I stopped short. I put it in park, and while I know it was dumb at the time, I got out of the car and walked around it and looked for someone and saw no one. The wind picked up a bit as I climbed back in, and I just left. While I was driving home, I went to put on some music to get the creepiness out of the car. As I glanced in the rearview mirror for a brief moment, I saw a face. It was of a pale woman staring at me with angry eyes. I have never been more scared because I thought someone had snuck into my car. So I turned my head while driving. Again, not a smart move, but it was a reflex. And no one was there. After a few minutes, I pulled into a gas station with a 24-hour convenience store. I went to use the bathroom to just splash some water on my face and regain my composure. I went into the store and bought a drink when the man behind the register, who knows me from other nights and rides, said, long night, huh? To which I replied, you don't even know. I bought the drink, we wished each other good night, and I walked out. As I looked at my car, my driver's side rear door was wide open. I looked around at the empty parking lot and was very confused because no one had been there at this time of night except me, and I know I locked the doors. I walked back into the store and before I could say a word, the cashier said, I think the young lady is in the bathroom, if that's what you're waiting for. I just nodded and ran out, got into my car and left. It was then I decided that that was enough rides for the night. It was time to go home. But when I started driving, I couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't alone in the car. I made a decision to not look in the rearview mirror unless it was absolutely necessary. I was taking an exit off the interstate when I heard a woman exhale behind me loud and I yelled leave me alone and just like that it was over for days I didn't want to drive my car at night but I decided I wanted to get some rides in so things quickly got back to normal however every once in a while while driving late at night I swear I could still see those eyes staring back at me thanks for giving my stories a listen please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe for the channel for future videos and check the links in the description and don't forget to stay scary.